You have failed this city. Hello and welcome back to Indie Rebel, Hollywood effects without the Hollywood budget. This is part one of three of a three part tutorial series where we're gonna take you from start to finish on how to produce basically TV quality effects uh, for yourself, for your own independent film productions. We're gonna be covering the, the filming and the lighting and the costumes and the sound design and the, the props, uh, the visual effects of course as well, that's mostly what the channel seems to be about. And we're gonna have a lot of fun, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And by the way, this entire series is sponsored by Bordio, who we will be discussing a little bit more in depth in part three. So stick around, and let's have some fun. All right, so when you go about shooting your independent film productions, obviously you're gonna to wanna to start with the camera. Now we are using the Ursa Mini 4K. Uh, this has about 11 to 12 stops of dynamic range, and it is a big, beefy cinema camera. And I love this camera. It has a global shutter, which you don't find on many cameras these days. You could just as easily shoot this on something like this. This is a Canon Rebel T2i. I actually shot an entire feature film with this camera in the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens that it came with. That movie now has over a million views on YouTube. So don't think that you need the big and expensive gear in order to, to pull off your you know, independent film productions and stuff like that, okay? The camera is not that important. I have a nice camera, so we're gonna use the nice camera, but we could just as easily have done it with a, a Canon you know, DSLR. So when we're dealing with the cameras as well, one of the things you also wanna take into consideration is the sound. And you'll notice I have an external shotgun microphone on here, which is wired directly into the camera. A lot of people will do that and they shoot their entire movie that way and it sounds like crap, all right? This is not designed for capturing production audio when it's mounted to the camera like that. Ideally, you wanna have a sound person and we're gonna get the sound, the boom mic, you know, as close to the actor as you possibly can. This is just here to capture a better scratch track for me to do my sound work in post. Because as you can hear, maybe uh, through my, my lav mic, we're in a, a space that bounces the sound around a lot. There's a lot of echo right now. So any sound we do capture is gonna sound like garbage. So yeah, we're gonna try to capture the best sound that we can as we're shooting this, but we're still gonna go through and rebuild everything in post. And we'll talk about that in part three of this series. So let's go ahead and get this set up here. I'm gonna be standing up high here in just a moment, which you'll see momentarily. And we're gonna start getting this shot uh, set up. All right, so we're gonna take just a normal cheap generic light stand. And when you set these out, a, a trick you can use, I've got it like basically uh, screwed in right now. It's going to get filmed down here at this part. And I just put it on the ground and let it kind of splay out till it's stable. And then we lock it up like that. And then whenever you're using any sort of light stands or any stands, make sure you use sandbags. You get these on Amazon, dirt cheap. I think you get like four of them for 12 bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. Fill it with sand or gravel and put it on one of the legs, and that's just gonna help keep this from getting knocked over. Next thing we're gonna get is our lights. These are newer flat panel LED lights, and I've actually shot an entire feature film with these for all the night scenes. What's really cool about this, it's got built-in diffusion, which we can take on and off if we want. They come with a set of barn doors as well, and then on the back, you can see that it is going to be battery powered, and that is the best thing about these. So we're gonna just put it onto our light stand here, screw that into place, turn that around so you guys can see. And we have two Sony batteries. I number all my batteries so I can keep them in pairs. You can see this is battery pair number two. I also have like three, four, one, however many batteries you have, you just pair them up. And we're gonna clip these on and then flip it on. Boom, just like that. Now, the other cool thing about these light panels is they have adjustable color temperatures. So I have white light that I can play with, and I have yellow light that I can play with. And if actually I flip this around here, and I'll try not to blind you guys, so here's the white, and here's the yellow. And that allows you to get really creative with your lighting choices in your cinematography. So we're gonna be using these today to help light our shot. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and place this upstairs and I will talk about my reasoning for putting it where I do. All right, set this down here. And I'm gonna be 
out here when we're shooting this. So I've got the camera down here, and I'm gonna have my light back over here giving me what we call an edge light or a rim light. And that's just gonna make this look really, really good. Now if you notice too, I have my overhead lights on right now. So we're gonna shut these off and then switch over to just my LED panel and we'll get this rolling. All right, we got the main overhead lights off. I'm gonna raise up this one here into the frame. And again, the, the goal with all this is to give me kind of an edge. So I actually don't wanna completely side light myself. I'm gonna do what's called backlighting. So I'm gonna actually move this back to here and we'll turn this on. I'm gonna use white, I think. There it goes. It means I can control the intensity of that. Just give myself a little bit of a, a backlight edge there. I'm gonna be standing out on this little precipice with the bow, and if you take a look at our cinema camera, so uh, looking at that, it should have some nice uh, contrast going on. The leather should be reflecting the, the light nicely and everything, and uh, it should be looking really good. Now ideally, you as the filmmaker are gonna be the one behind the camera and probably not in front of the camera. I'm just one of those personalities. I don't mind being in front of it as well. I live alone in the middle of nowhere. And so a lot of times I find myself doing both jobs. And so that's the other thing I wanted to show you is that it is very possible to shoot movies and do the stuff by yourself if the, you're all you have to work with. Uh, but if you get yourself some help, it's gonna make things a lot easier. Uh, and your helper can help you get your, your shots lined up, run camera, help do lights, or maybe your helper is the one in front of the camera and you're strictly behind the camera. But either way, uh, there's no reason not to be making a movie and I think we're ready to go. So let's go and talk about weapons here. And uh, I think I'll just about wrap this section up. All right, final step for getting ready for the shoot is of course wardrobe and props. So I've got my, my wardrobe here. This jacket I actually just got for like 50 bucks on Amazon. I did not buy it just for this tutorial. I'm actually a huge fan of the show arrow and so for Halloween yes I dress up as the green arrow the emerald archer himself when you are working with weapons as well on your film productions safety is very important people have died by being stupid and doing stupid things uh, so we when we're making movies do not use real weapons whether it be guns, knives, or in this case, bows and arrows, all right? Just too many bad things can happen in the process if you do that. So, this is a real bow. This is a Samic Sage takedown recurve with 50 pound limbs. If you shoot archery, you'll know what I mean by that. It's not a high-end bow by any means. It's definitely a, an entry-level bow, but I enjoy shooting it, and uh, I, it's a good way for me to blow off steam. This, when I'm holding it back at full draw, is 50 pounds. We do not want to be firing real arrows at the camera or anybody else out of this thing. It will severely injure or possibly kill people. So we're not gonna use the real bow. What we're going to use is a kid's bow. This is a youth long bow. You can see it's not recurved on the tips at all. And this was red, so I just went ahead and I spray painted the whole thing black. This bow, because it is so lightweight, as far as the draw weight goes, you can dry fire this. Do not dry fire a real bow. It will possibly destroy and shatter up the limbs, uh, causing injury to yourself and those around you. Do not dry fire a real bow. Uh, in this case, because this is basically what I'm calling a prop bow, uh, it's not gonna cause any injury if something did happen to this. We can dry fire this one all day long. Another thing when you're dealing with authenticity is make sure that either you or your performer has a little bit of experience with what you're trying to do. It's gonna add that extra layer of realism to it. In my case, I shoot the bow and arrow all the time. So when I'm sitting here and I get to a full draw, it's gonna look natural. I'm not sitting here doing this timid thing like this, right? I'm not drawing way far out over here. It's boom, I hit my normal anchor point just like I would with the real one. If I get the real one here, same anchor point, same pose. It's just it's a lot more work to have to hold that open. The other thing too, we do not want to be firing real arrows out of this thing, right? So we're not actually gonna draw and spend the time loading and you know doing our thing that way. On top of it not being safe, it also takes too long. When you're doing any sort of superhero action movie kind of stuff, you just reach up, touch the knocks of the arrows, act like you've grabbed one, bring it down, draw, and release, okay? In real life, 
We shoot off the, the left side, especially when you're shooting Western style, like most of us probably would be. It is very difficult to draw an arrow, get it lined up, switch your grip, draw, and release. Most of the time, if you are doing speed shooting, you'd be shooting off the right side, but that's not what we see in movies. That's not what us as Western audiences are familiar with. So we are gonna be putting the arrow digitally on the left-hand side. And in order to do that, you just have to pretend. You have to just act like you're able to do what it is that you're trying to do. And you can see I can dry fire this bow all day long. It's not gonna hurt anybody or anything. All right, so we've got our lighting set up. We've set up the camera. Uh, I've got my costume on. We've talked about weapon safety. I think we're ready to go and actually shoot this thing. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. In part two, we're gonna be talking about how to do all the visual effects and literally adding in the, the virtual arrow so you can look like a, a real superhero. And then in part three, we're going to be diving in depth into the sound design and sound mixing because as they say, sound is half the picture. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm El Director. You've been watching Indie Rebel Hollywood Effects without a Hollywood budget.